If you've ever been stuck not knowing what to play on stage during a prayer, in this video, you're gonna learn what you need to know to make sure that never happens again. I'm gonna teach you one simple technique that will help you cover any moment of transition with absolutely no prep time. Let's check it out. Hey guys, I'm David from sundaysounds.com where our purpose is making it easy for you to find success and get great results with your Worship Keys rigs based in Mainstage and Ableton Live. If you're a Worship Keys player, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell because we put out a new Worship Keys oriented video every single week. Today we're gonna to be talking about a simple technique for underscoring over any moment, or rather under any moment, I suppose. Now we put out lots of altar call tutorials in the past, and in each of those videos we've taught you a specific progression or technique or melodic line that you can use to underscore. For this video we wanted to teach you something that's so universal that you don't have to memorize it really at all. So there's three things that we knew we wanted this tutorial to include. So first off, this idea, this concept needs to be simple. You can internalize it and get comfortable with it, but then it's not something that you have to remember or be actively really thinking about in the moment while you're using it. Secondly, this needs to be dynamic, and that means that you can flow and build in both intensity and emotional feel as you're following your pastor, or whoever's speaking, maybe a moment of prayer or altar call. And then lastly, it needs to work in any key. So once you learn this principle, you can apply it to any of the major keys in the scale without having to do a bunch of complex transposition work in your head. So if you're comfortable playing in any given key, you're gonna be able to apply this technique. So it's simple, it's dynamic, and you can play it in any key. Let's get into it. now. In terms of what I would actually call this approach, I'm just gonna be really straightforward about what it is. It's the simple melodic line approach to underscoring. Now, I'm gonna start at the very base level of what this could mean for you. And there's a couple of specific things that I like to qualify as, as really making this so simple, so dynamic, and so flexible that you can apply it to any moment, any key, any song, anytime you're underscoring on stage. So we're gonna start in the key of C. We'll talk about this a little bit there, and then we'll take it into another key as well, so you can kind of hear a few different contexts for how this might work. Okay, so there's two main components here, and then one rule that you have to follow. The first component is the simple melodic line, and that's gonna happen in your right hand. So in the key of C, this, this could be whatever riff feels good to you, but I would recommend starting out, just go along with me here. Let's learn a four note riff in the key of C. So it's gonna be like this. So C, B, G, and E, starting at the top, working my way down. And I just have a grand piano from Sunday Keys for main stage pulled up. The same sound is in uh, Sunday Keys for Ableton Live if you wanna follow along with the same sound. So I'm just gonna go C, B, G, E. That's the melodic line, those four notes. I'm just gonna stick right there. We'll talk about some ways you can make this more interesting and switch it up a little bit into the video, a little bit further in. But for now, right there is where we're gonna hang out. So that's the first component. The second component is the left hand. Now you can keep this as simple or as complex as you would like. The only rule is just play notes, either bass notes or chords that are in the key of C. So we could play C, G over B, A minor, G, F, C over E, D minor, back down to C. And if you want, again, you can just play the bass notes. That's totally fine, especially if you have a pad or something layered in there, in there as well. You don't have to play super dense left-hand chords. You can keep it really simple. For me, I'm gonna pl probably play one, the five, and then the high three up here on top for a lot of these chords. But again, it just depends on whatever feels right to you. You can keep it really simple and just play bass notes as well. So the two components are the right hand simple melodic lead, or simple melodic line, C, B, G, E, and then left hand block chords. Those are the two components. And then I also mentioned that there's one rule that we're gonna follow. Now, of course, in music, there are only rules up until you decide to break them, but for the purpose of this experiment or this technique, Let's start off by following this rule and then maybe we can talk about breaking it a little bit further into the video. 
So the only rule is that we're gonna play that melodic lead line, that simple melodic line, before the chord change. And we're just gonna play one, two, three, four. And then we're just gonna play the chord, so like this. So again, two components, right hand, simple melodic line, left hand, basic chords, and then the rule is that the riff happens before the chord lands. So that's all there is to the very basis of this technique. And I'm talking about it in the key of C, but this works in any key. So we can do it in G. So again, this is the bass level. And let's go back to the key of C. Once you've got these two principles in mind, I've got my right hand lead line or my riff and my left hand just playing basic chords, you can go anywhere in the key that you'd like. And because this little melodic line is so open-ended with the one, seven, the five, and the three, it's going to work pretty well no matter what chord you play in the left hand. So. You can do those chords, play them interchangeably in any order. This is both simple because your right hand is doing the same thing and dynamic because you can follow the mood or the atmosphere that whoever's speaking is sort of laying down by changing up the chords that you play. So you could take it minor. And just kind of hang out right there nice and somber. And as soon as you need to have a little uplift, turn it major, you can go to the one, to the two, to the four. So you've gone from minor, a little bit somber, straight to a little bit more uplift without having to change a thing in the right hand. And this riff is actually so versatile, you can even go off scale, so. So again, a little bit more complex there because we're getting out of the scale pretty hard a couple of times, but it's still quite flexible. And of course, you don't have to go there unless that's something that you want to practice and, and get comfortable doing. Now, obviously, we can't just play that same melodic line every single time we underscore for all of time. But the principle of having these sort of home notes is the real core of this technique and also a simple sort of rule, a single rule that guides your decision making. So let's stick with these four notes, but I'm gonna play around a little bit with the note placement. I'm gonna change up the order just to sort of suit the mood. I'm gonna improvise a little bit here so you can hear how without even really needing to move my right hand shape very much, if at all, I can get all sorts of different textures and sort of feels from this same simple idea. Thank you. 
So again, I never deviated from that rule and the left hand never changed. All I did was play with the note placement, the order of those exact same notes in the right hand. And then a few times just to color the specific chord that I was playing, I added in a few additional notes in the scale. But that right hand still sort of playing along by the rule that we've imposed on ourselves. And because we're in the key of C here, I can hit any of the white keys and it's gonna sound okay. So. And as long as you know your scale and whatever key you're playing in, you're gonna be able to take this exact same concept and apply it to that key. So I've done it now with just a simple piano. I'm gonna add in a pad. I'm using the Worship Pad from Sunday Keys 2021 just to show you a little bit of how this sort of glues things together a little bit more. So you notice as I repeat this multiple times, I continue to add a little extra flourish and change up that right hand but the rule remains the same and the left hand structure remains dynamic and flexible. So with this example, I've got the worship pad here in section two of Sunday Keys and it's following both the left hand chords that I play and the right hand lead part that I play. Sometimes that's a really cool effect. Other times you might wanna leave that right hand completely free to just handle the lead part without the synths following it. So I've got a duplicate of this patch with easy chord enabled. Easy chord is a feature of Sunday keys that allows your bass note presses to actually trigger full worship pad voicings, which leaves the right hand completely free to play piano or lead parts. So I've got easy chord turned on for the pad only, and it's set to the key of C. So here we go. So here I'm able to have this really nice voicing in the left hand, which leaves my right hand completely free to do whatever I want. Which can be really nice, especially if you want to intentionally add a little extra tension or dissonance in the right hand because those chords are still held down by the left hand. So like I said earlier, it really doesn't matter where you go in the left hand, you just wanna follow that simple rule for how the right hand and the left hand interact. Now earlier I talked about, of course we can follow this rule, but we're also gonna talk a little bit about breaking it. Now, this is meant to be simple and dynamic and easy to transpose and use in any key. And there's a little bit of a call and response to this rule. The right hand does something, and then the left hand responds by landing on a chord. But of course, we can step outside that. Which gives it a totally different feel, right? I'm starting the riff. On the change instead of having that riff happen before the chord lands and I can go back and forth. So really it's just another rule or an inversion of the rule instead of the riff leading to the chord, the riff starts when the chord lands. Again, this is more of a framework than anything else because once you can get comfortable doing this, you can do this in any key and you can do it in any time signature. So let me show you this. We're gonna do this in G and now I have a live groove from Sunday Keys, actually a soon to be released live groove. It's not yet available. It's gonna be sent to all Sunday Keys owners pretty soon called Washi Swing. This is a six eight live groove. So, so the live groove is triggered by the left hand bass note. As long as I'm holding down the note or sustaining, this groove is gonna play. So we're in G and in six eight, here's how it works.
So we changed keys, we even changed time signatures, and this sort of idea, this interplay between the right and left hands with this one simple rule still works. Okay guys, so we've talked about the two simple components of this technique and the one rule that guides them. Then we talked about how you can sort of turn that rule on its head when you want to change things up or sort of set, step outside of the pattern that you've put in place. Now, if you're wondering how, okay, I like the idea of this, but I need the sounds to be able to pull it off. All the sounds that I've used in today's tutorial video are available in Sunday Keys 2021, which is available in Ableton Live and main stage format. So before we get any further into the video, if you'd like to learn more about Sunday Keys, you can check out the link that we'll put in the description of this video. And the exact sounds that I used to teach you this part are in Sunday Keys. Now, again, if you're a Worship Keys player and you wanna talk more about underscoring, altar call, playing underneath somebody, we'd love to hear from you in the comments with your questions, your experiences playing underneath somebody. Maybe you've got a great story about when it went well or a story about when it didn't go so well. We'd love to talk to you more in the comments. Lastly, we're gonna link in the description to some free worship patches. So if you're a Worship Keys player, we have a big library of free worship patches available on our website. And if you are a Worship Keys player, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up. We really appreciate that. That support goes a long way. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.